Is this thing on? Yeah. Oh, man. Welcome back, folks, to another episode of The Shell Toucher. Today, we're going to do a super quick, Lies. super quick, I'm saying this now, I, I always say this, but I'm going to try to really do a super quick episode today because, well, you know, just because. So here we go. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Before I delve into it, I should probably welcome any newcomers here. This is The Shell Toucher channel. We deal with all things Camino de Santiago. Uh, tips, tricks, hacks, and not your usual garden variety of tips, tricks, and hacks. We do our own. Yes. See that? Just stuff with this, too. Anyways, we get distracted very easily as well, as you can tell. But anyways, if you're interested in... Did I say anyways like three times in a row? I probably did. You did. But if you're interested in keeping up to date with new tips, tricks, and hacks as they develop, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and um, liking it and even commenting. I would love to know what you're thinking. If you'd like to see longer videos versus shorter videos, maybe there's some topics you'd like be interested in hearing about in regards to the Camino de Santiago, not just random topics. Oh, that would be interesting too. <sighs> but today's topic anyways, let's get back to that. Actually, no, let's get back to that in a second. <laughs> Okay, folks, often people will talk about footwear. I may be one of those people. Sling bags, backpacks, hats, stuff like that. Uh, fanny packs. <laughs> hey, fanny hey. packs. Shame on you. Where is a fanny pack? Shame on you. I know many of you, too. Good people you are. But fanny packs? Never stood that. Today, as I mentioned in the opening segment, we will be talking about... Did I mention this? I'm not even sure if I mentioned this. But foot recovery. After a long day of hiking, day in and day out, possibly, you know, up to 8, 9, 10, depending on who you are and what you're capable of, long, long days of hiking. And with those long days of hiking come sore feet. Feet that will be sore in ways you've never felt before. I'm serious. At the end of the day, when you're climbing up to that top bunk, because no doubt you're going to get a top bunk, that ladder, I really, this, you know, this is one of my pet peeves on the Camino. Anyone, anyone considering opening an albergue, if you do, Make the steps for the ladder wide. Because when it's just the bars, your feet hurt so bad. Many of you know what I'm talking about. Climbing those things. So we have some workarounds to get past the, just that part. More so, we have some workarounds to get your feet back up and running uh, in proper condition the next day. Speeding up recovery and just making them feel so much better than what they normally could be. Rather than relying on ibuprofen, you know, candy. Uh, and other, like, over- or under-the-counter uh, cures. I don't even know if that means. Am I talking about, like, a drug deal in Spain? Don't do drugs in Spain. Don't do a drug deal in Spain, especially. Where was I? Muscle recovery. We want to support the foot in so many different ways. We always talk about supporting the foot during the hike. We focus on footwear a lot. Arches, arch support, uh, heel support, toe support foot support, toe socks, uh, tapered socks. It's endless, really. But we never really talk about foot recovery. And if we do, it's very seldom. I haven't seen anything. So what do you do with a drunken sailor? No, what do you do at the end of the day once you get those kicks off that you've been wearing all day and no doubt they're steaming or possibly soaked from the rain? But what do you slip into? I'll tell you what I slip into. Recovery sandals. There are a variety of recovery sandals on the market right now, or at least there's a variety of sandals labeled as recovery sandals and it's not really clear whether the people labeling it recovery really know why they're labeling it recovery sandal uh i've God, i've experimented with many over the course of the years and uh so i've kind of have it dialed in at this point and the first few t times or attempts were uh for science and i learned a lot first and foremost Oconi -oni. these look at these bad boys these are also like booties for adults. They're just super comfortable. I would imagine they're like Crocs. I've never, like fanny bags or fanny packs, I've never sunk my feet into Crocs. No judgment. Okay, I'm going judgment. But these super cushiony, super soft, great arch support. Love these. However, the only thing that I don't dig about these is 
how big and bulky they are. You know, they're not easy to clip to your backpack. Just not a super fit. My feet are slender. Look at me. I'm a little guy. Not a little guy. I mean, I'm perfect height for my weight. But these are just so clunky on me. They make my feet look huge. And they, But, you know, one good thing about them is give me like two inches in height. Yeah. So I look even more lanky. So the Hoka Oni Onis, super comfy. If you have like wider feet, thicker feet that can fill these babies out, maybe consider them. If you are um, transferring your backpack or have another bag you're transferring from uh, albergue to albergue, you can keep them in there. But um, super comfortable and your feet feel like they're, you're just, uh, it's, they're super comfortable. That's all I have to say about that. So that's the first pair. I will not be wearing them on this trip, this next Camino, nor did I wear them on, did I wear them? No, and, uh, on a past Camino, just because they were, again, they were too, for all the reasons I mentioned. Another popular brand, Ufos. And these are a little bit different than your typical Ufos. And I'll explain to you why I decided on this pair. These actually are probably, if not just as comfortable as the Hoka Onionis, more comfortable. This is like walking in butter. Super duper comfortable. I love these. However, same complaint, really. I thought if I got, you know, a Velcro clasp, toe clasp thingy, uh, sandal style. I could customize it to fit my foot better, but they're still just super clunky and, you know, hard to pack. They take up a lot of space. They weigh, they don't, I mean, they weigh, they have some weight to them, but again, again. super clunky, super bulky. But if you are transferring your bag and your space, consider these. Now I'll tell you why I chose this in a moment. We'll get to that. And on my last Camino, I wore these and these are by Under Armour, believe it or not. They're called Wild Grippers, and these are, I think these are like the rock signature sandal. They had nothing to do with my choice in the matter. In fact, I didn't realize that until somewhere down the line, I looked inside, maybe it's on the other shoe, but his signature is like inside here, not his real signature, but his autograph, if you will. So I, I landed on these because once again, I chose a slider because, well, we'll get to that, but as you can see, you can't adjust the size of this, and my feet are slender. Even when they're swollen at the end of the day, it was tough to keep these things on, but super comfortable. Super duper comfortable. And they have Michelin tire tread on the bottom. So my thinking was, this is going to be great. These are going to be wonderful on the trail. You know what I mean? The, uh, super grippy. Guaranteed to be grippy, right? Michelin tires? I ain't going to hydroplane in these bad boys. I was wrong. These are not grippy at all. It's almost like, I mean, while it is tire... It almost performs like it's plastic. It's slippery, it's slidey, and it's no good in the shower. And that's what I want to get to now is when you do finally land on a sandal or a flip-flop or whatever you're bringing, not only does it need to be comfortable, it also needs to be grippy. On the ground as well as in the shower. You're going to be wearing them as shower shoes. Like any other piece of gear that you will be bringing on your Camino, test it first. Test it, no matter what it is. If it's flip-flops, test them in the shower. Wear whatever flip-flop or slider or recovery signal that you get. Always take showers with it first before you pack in your bag because these were super slippery. I nearly died like s several times. It got to the point where I just stopped using them and risked athlete's foot. Yeah, crazy like that. But again, super comfortable at home. Maybe something, I don't, you know, honestly, I wouldn't wear them because of this huge sandal. And you know what? This brings me to another point. See the inside of this? You probably can't, but on the inside... It has cloth, it has material. When deciding on a flip-flop or a recovery sandal, or whatever, make sure it's all rubber or it's all waterproof and it's all sealed and there's no material at all because again, you'll be wearing these into the shower. And right when you get off the trail, the first thing you usually wanna do is take a shower if you don't ha have that impulse. So that said, if it's cloth and material, it's gonna stay wet for hours after you get out of the shower while you're walking around town. They're gonna to be soggy and squishy and gross. And if you wear socks with sandals, I bet you wear a fanny pack too. No, no. You can wear socks with sandals with my hack and my tip and, and not be judged as much. Ah. If you're wearing socks in combination with these, the socks are gonna get wet too. So always look to see if there's any material on it. You don't want the material. You want it rubber, you want it sealed, you want it just a waterproof sh sandal. Something that will not absorb water. Will not absorb water in the shower. So, yeah, I dragged these to Spain for nada. And then there is your classic 
uh, Javiadas from Brazil. These flip flops, I actually think I got these in Central America. This, this is a Brazilian company. These are great. These are super grippy, super comfortable. They don't take up much space. All you need is a carabiner and you're good to go. S clip carabiner. But a regular good old fashioned carabiner. This is Black Diamond. Just like that. And if you clip them together like this, and then just clip them on your bag anywhere. And so now they're not even taking up space in your bag. There you go. Let them dangle, baby. Let them dangle. So they're always at hand because while you're walking and hiking too, if you want to give your feet a break, if you have problematic feet and you're changing your socks maybe twice a day or once a day even, while you're doing that at the cafe, just chillaxing and letting your feet breathe, you might just want to have your flip-flops at the ready so you can slip them on. Anyways, so uh, Javian is a great brand, lightweight, super packable. However, not the one, not the sandal of my choice anymore. I mean, it was when I was, long story, it doesn't matter. But let me introduce, well, first of all, recovery. You made this bar, obviously you're interested, but let's talk about some real benefits when it comes to considering your feet after the hike, considering your secondary footwear. First and foremost, muscle recovery. After intense physical activity, your doggies. They need help. They are fatigued. They're probably pulsating. And recovery sandals are going to give you the cushion to encase them, not with, but while still allowing them to breathe and support them at the same time with a little bit of give. So in essence, their primary purpose is to alleviate muscle fatigue. And that's what we're going for here. And that's when a speed recovery for the next day. They will also by design improve circulation. Long periods of hiking can cause decreased circulation in the feet, especially. Some of you have experienced this. This will get them, get the blood moving again. Very, very important, especially when it comes to recovery. After a day of, you know, strike after strike, your feet are going to feel like someone's been punching them. I kid you not. It will really feel like someone's been punching them. And someone has. Mother Earth. Mother Earth has been punching your feet like a punching bag. And then there's the relaxation element. You really just want to chillax while you're doing your laundry, while you're running around doing a million things, but you're going to the supermarket. Those, that extra mile of the supermarket after the fact can make or break you, I'm telling you. So you want to have your feet in recovery sandals to provide some form of relaxation to your weary doggies. How many times did I say doggies in this episode? Probably like five. There'll be more. So with cushioning and shock absorbing and relaxation providing sandals, this can help prevent stiffness at the end of the day and it can help prevent stiffness the next morning. And again, climbing those stairs to that top bunk, you'll be thankful that you're wearing recovery sandals. That cushion is, you'll still feel it through them. But it'll be so much better than just with your bare feet or socked feet going up there. Aye. And then for people that have arch issues, wearing recovery sandals with arch support is key. And this type of cushioning and support can help prevent common foot problems that some of us suffer from in everyday life. And some of us will be suffering from on the Camino. There's no way around it. Pero necesito sufrir. Es verdad. So that's what I had in mind when I was, again... I wanted. To, I was supposed to go on the Camino in 2020. 2020. Then COVID hit, and I was in the house. My packed bag, ready to go. It gave me more time to dig into all these things and research. So that's where a lot of this is coming from. And I had a lot of free time, let me tell you, working from home and whatnot. But, so how can we one up the recovery shoe? Is that even possible? Well, I'm here today to tell you, yes, folks, it is. Because, well, in my COVID doldrums... Doldrums? COVID-induced... No. covid Chrysalis? My COVID chrysalis? Can I say that? Oopa. To make you feel weird too? Chrysalis. I mean, my COVID chrysalis, where I was developing into the... Mariposa de la noche. That I am. Peregrino. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. While I was digging around online, I discovered... I, you know, I thought, hey, recovery sandals. What about recovery socks? Is, is there such a thing? Maybe there's like, um, you know, socks with pulse points in it or... um. A acupuncture socks or something like that and <laughs> there is 
However, it's not like reflexology sock. It's actually more scientific than that. And here they are. These are called Naboso recovery socks. Now, mind you, this is this is the new model. This is the 2024, I'm pretty sure, or late 2023 issue. This company's been around for a few years now, but their original socks were tapered socks. They weren't toe socks. I'll say it again. They were tapered socks. They still sell them. And they were they were interesting. Like they were black. Both pairs were black, but one pair, I think it was the left side, had blue a blue front, a blue toe. It was weird. So it looked like I was always wearing the mismatched socks, and I became very conscious of it. And everyone would you know that would be my disclaimer upon meeting people. You know, be like, hey, nice to meet you. Uh, you enjoying the Camino? Yeah, I am. Oh, just so you know, these socks are a pair. They're supposed to look like this because I own socks like that. I couldn't wear flip-flops. I couldn't opt for the lighter design. I had to wear sliders. That's that's what that was all about. It's because they didn't have toe socks for a while. In fact, this year I was looking into cutting between the big toe and stitching that up just so I would be able to wear them with flip-flops finally. But why am I hell-bent on wearing these? Well, folks, it's what's inside that counts. It's true. This is what's inside. This is what's inside. <laughs> yeah. These little spikes. And these go right on, all the way up under the toes as well. I don't know if you can see it. So in the regular socks that I was wearing, it's just all, the entire sole of the sock is covered in these little tiny spikes. And they're not like uncomfortable. They're made out of like silicone. But they still, they're hard and they're spiky. And they feel so great on your feet at the end of the day. These in combination with recovery sandals are like your secret weapon to feeling great the next day. These tiny spikes... They do so much. Naboso in general, the other socks I use and these toe socks offer several mind-blowing benefits. Would you like to know them? Okay. Enhanced proprioception. Yeah, say that sober. <laughs> that is in regards to the textured inner sole. Or insole. Depending on what school you subscribe to. And the go whole goal of this, like similar to reflexology or not, is to stimulate the nerves in the bottom of the foot, which has been being beat up all day long. So it's stimulating the bottom of your foot, drawing attention to that area to speed up recovery. Kind of similar to the philosophy of acupuncture. Ow! And you know, after you get off the trail, you're just, you're wobbly. You're, you're just, <laughs> nothing feels good. These help a lot. Due to the sensory input, these can also improve balance, stability, movement control. All are pretty much essential to preventing further injury and getting your butt to the supermarket to get something to eat or to the bar to grab some carbohydrates. Would you like some bread? With your bread, no butter. Also, in combination with recovery sandals, this will improve the circulation even more. I highly, 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 highly recommend these. There's also a slight compression element to it. The other socks that I had, the tapered ones, Nibosos, are definitely compression socks as well. So your feet just feel wonderful. But improved circulation can also, with these spiky things, break up any, how you say, metabolic waste products that are built up in the muscle or around the muscle inside the foot and get that moving. So reducing post-hiking soreness as well as improving circulation. And this is actually, I've never had a blister either. And I, I, I think some of that has to do with this. Any part, any... Any blisters that were forming, I really feel like these spikes just moved that around in there and kind of worked it out. Every time I took a step inside those recovery sandals, I was like massaging my feet with like little tiny spikes. Also with the toe design, it encourages natural movement of the foot. So it really gets to splay and breathe. I mean, hopefully you're using toe socks while you're hiking during the day too, but if you're not, you should really consider using them at least at night. Again, prevents stiffness, encourages flexibility, Gets everything moving in there, which all in all will allow your feet to recover faster. Now, you're probably wondering, what am I pairing these with if I'm not using any of the sandals I talked about? These bad boys. Just arrived. North Face. These North Face, I'll have a link below, but these are just the right size. While still offering a recovery element. See those little tiny bumps in there? These work especially well. The other sandals didn't have these, but these little tiny bumps work like fingers pushing in the sock, pushing in the little spikes of these socks into my feet. 
It's really, you know, both side, uh, on a side note, they also make a yoga mat that I've picked up with all these little spikes on it that are re it feels great. If you're into yoga and you do yoga, this really, again, stimulating. St nerve stimulation. Yeah. Anyways, back to this. So these socks, now I can finally wear flip-flops, work perfectly inside in combination with the North Face. I can't remember the name of this, but I'll post it right to here. No, I'll post it right. Yeah, I'll post it right here. Base cam. And there it is. So write that down. You got that? Okay. Yeah, I do all my own sound effects and stunts. This is the ticket, folks. This is what you want off the trail. Don't go cheap on your post-trail footwear. People do all the time. They just buy a cheap pair of flip-flops to find, you know, I know it's a pilgrimage. You're supposed to suffer. But I mean, my whole trip is if I don't have to suffer as much, I have more time to enjoy myself. I know I'm a simple man with simple thoughts. So with that, I just want to give my body, much like the Camino itself provides, I want to provide for my body. Much like the Camino itself offers support to the traveling and weary pilgrim, I want to offer support to the traveling and weary feet, my feet. So treat yourself well. Treat yourself well. Your body is a temple. Take care of that temple. Well, these socks are kind of pricey, again, if you take the footwear post-hike footwear serious, you're, you, you'll be willing to invest in yourself. So check out these socks. There'll be a link below in the Boso. Check out uh, the North Face sandal. Again, as long as you have a good recovery sandal, these are what I've landed on. These are going to work well for me. These do work well for me. You may find your own recovery sandal that fits your style, maybe, your individual taste and style, as well as your foot. That's the most important part. I always opted for the sliders because of that particular recovery sock I was using. Finally, I don't have to rely... That, that will not dictate my footwear anymore, my pro uh, coming out footwear. So don't let it dictate yours. You have two options. You can get the regular style in the Bosa, like, like these, or you can opt for the new design. I highly recommend this one. It's super nice, super comfortable, super snug. Your feet feel great in it. And it breathes really well. It's got a light compression band across the top. It's just a great sock, a great recovery sock. It's a game changer. This in combination with the right recovery sandal. I know I'm now just repeating myself, but I promised you a short episode. Was it been? Good Lord. Anyways, folks, if you truly enjoyed today's episode and got something out of it, please, for the love of God, comment below and let me know what you're thinking. Longer episodes, shorter episodes, tops you'd like to see covered, tops you'd like not to see covered. Maybe I should wear something different. I don't. Quechua. Yeah. Representing the Cathalon today. If you don't know what that is, you will. Please leave a comment below. Like, definitely like it really helps the channel and subscribe and know when each new episode drops. Before your next Camino, I will have you functioning like a well-oiled machine. Human machine. Flesh machine. Flesh machine. No. I think it's a metal band. Doesn't matter. So, until we meet again. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. One Camino.